Hello, 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 everyone. We are here working with the earthworms and trying to make these soils great again. I've been doing some work here, and I want to show you this next step in this process that's become a gigantic monster here. Um, did some work online yesterday for the... Uh, Cocoon tea. Cocoon tea, I'm sorry. The castings tea. <laughs> this is just a proof label. I didn't get it printed out yet, but I wanted to see what it would be like on the bottle, which isn't good because this bottle is kind of curved. And so when that sticks, it's going to have some problems, but I don't know what else to do. Is it going to be that big of a deal? Maybe when I get to be pro, I might change the bottle, but these were free. Captain Matt says... We got to repurpose. So that's what I'm doing. Give Captain Matt a thumbs up if you see him today. Uh, my, <laughs> my second try with the castings was a bust because I got these little cotton bags to put the castings in and now I realize this size only holds less than a half a pound. So, but I am planning to put the label. I have a little card of mine with a label that we're gonna attach. It's not done yet. This is my mealworm for us. So we'll have this in the farm stand and um, I'll have a little uh, label with some teas that you can make um, with it. I love that idea. So if you guys know of any legal terms that I have to add, I added to, um, captain matt's and we put do not consume on the bottom so uh that uh, nobody drinks it <laughs> okay then second we have advanced to the um stage of making sure these castings are not going to i've ordered larger bags so we're gonna have a five pound bag of the worm castings in the farm stand for people with house plants so they can begin their journey of knowledge and how to keep those healthy and thriving um so before i put any of these castings in the farm stand we got the mosquitoites to try and I just followed the instructions on the back of the bag. It said, I think, four. Let's see what it does say. Very sure. I will tell you. Um, for a, um, it was for an application for, well, that's not, I swear I read that it was four. Yeah, mix four tablespoons per one gallon. Of water and that's for fungus gnat larva control which is I believe what we're gonna want in these castings so I got the little pump sprayer here looks like it's gonna hold 3.8 liters or one gallon what I have that I'm using as my little filter for those says to remove the dunk pieces so I'm gonna remove the dunk pieces before I put it in my tank I've got the coffee no, this is for my canning, but I buy a ton of them because I like them for putting a coffee uh, filter in and that's how I strain my coffee. But here, this cute little, this is a tea ball. You know, you put your tea in, I, I broke it in half and I use it as a filter. So if I have to tell you guys, it's actually the filter for when I do my um, poop samples <laughs> for the animals. So I have to test the parasite loads periodically. Um, and that's how I, I do get the uh, moisture from it separated and the eggs out so I can look at it under the microscope and determine whether they need anything to help them out. Which might never do because now that we're going biocomplete with our soils, uh, they're they're way more healthy. Their uh, body has enough nutrients to um, feed both their, themselves 
and their symbiotes. I know when I was going to college, they finally stopped calling it a parasitic type of a um, deal and that it's a symbiotic relationship usually happening with those type of things. And that's why now the new movement is to stop using dewormers because you're killing all of the ecosystem by using them as well. Oh, you know, they're trying, I'm trying to get my dung beetles back. <laughs> it's killed off the dung beetles in the poof piles and all kinds of wild stuff I was unaware of. I had lack of knowledge and now I'm trying real hard to. So I think maybe that can be used again. I'm going to research that. Or if you know, comment, tell me if I can reuse that in another batch or do I toss that now? I guess I haven't read that far <laughs> into the instructions. But I want to get this on those uh, castings. I'm going to, every time the nursery is getting, that's another big thing, you guys. I now have this huge nursery starting because I'm pulling, I'm sifting at this point in time. I'm doing the sifting on all the bends, which before I realized I just took all the amendments out of the, the of the bend and I just did a total reset left 15 percent approximately and then put it all in those big tanks which i'm gonna say technically i'm calling them growers those are not nurseries those are my grower bins now those are my grower bins and then uh my nursery my nurseries have expanded out of this room i'm running out of room till i get that other half of the room here cleared out and get all that junk sorted through and stop storing so much stuff and then maybe that half of the room can be the nursery and the grower and maybe I could put a big old trommel over there I don't know it's gonna be exciting to see how what this develops into because I do like um that thing never wants to put much pressure in there without leaking um <laughs> I do like running this worm farm and um so the nurseries are right over inside where the actual, whoa, that's dirty now, where the actual heat is. There's heat coming out here too, but the actual run, the heat run, there's no heat runs out here. So the actual heat runs are over there. So that's helping them stay warm. Plus, okay, the nurseries have the, um, heaters on i'm keeping them at about 80 and oh boy let me tell you what i'm finding i need to sift this bin um so <laughs> watch me here you guys i've got the pressure on this thing these here this is a nursery this is tower four's nursery so all week oh we were sifting with our hand do i just spray this like this just spray because i want to add some moisture to this because this is a nursery right there's still plenty of substrate and basically um, it can be broken down more and there's still castings in here. So these nurseries, when they got those heat, uh, see this is really dry. These nurseries are drying out pretty fast, especially with those heaters on. Okay, so I've been adding moisture to them because I thought, oh, the poor little guys that are down if there's a cocoon down on the bottom of this bin and uh if you're paying real close attention you'll see that that for some reason that heater forces that moisture out it drives it up or something somehow it drives moisture up through evaporation and then the moisture in the tank is wanting to sink but once that heat mat turns on it drives it back up so i'm playing around with the physics in that um with these guys if you've got a cocoon sitting on the bottom right on that heat mat guess what desiccate <laughs> there's that word again I haven't used it in a while um so gently here i'm just i hope i'm doing this right excited i've advanced to this stage i never knew this stage existed i want to thank you all for helping me there we are hopefully not going to have any fungus gnats in these <laughs> castings. And we are hopefully not going to kill any of the biology in here either. 
Um, I was actually quite, I looked at a few samples under the microscope of these castings and I noticed it didn't seem to have as much humic acid in it as what the pre-compost did. And the biology was, I felt lower. Um, so I'm wondering, do these worms eat all of it? And then now you just have like a nitration and okay, here's another level of information for you because I'm thinking on this and supposedly after three years, we are not supposed to have to add more biology, but we just keep our livestock underground alive by feeding it. Just like we feed our cows and our horses and we all know, hey, we have to give them a bale every week, a round bale, every week so that they have plenty of food so they can keep growing for us. Think about how much we're going to have to start applying to the top of that soil. We're going to try to grow it right there in place with the cover crop. Um, but if something should fail, then obviously we're going to need to buy somebody else's um, product to add to help get them. It seems still very dry. Now, I don't know how much stuff to add. Um, and I'm pretty sure I don't have enough. But if y'all just comment, tell me, I got to get on there and watch some videos. I know, but right now the critical deal is for me just to pass this schooling and get it over with. And then once I have this perfected and I have no doubt in my mind that I will, um, I feel like I have enough knowledge base with the biology degree. On, and then this extra bit of schooling on top of that, that um, I'm going to be able to nail this. I do need help from other people, though, as far as the farmer. I'm glad that he's on the same mindset, same page as I am with cover cropping and cor correcting the ecosystem. And I got another farmer that just contacted me. I want you to know, Mimi. He is looking at your worm castings. Yay. Although it was Urban Worm Company because he's getting semi-load. Not quite. He wants to find somebody else to buy another half a semi-load. But um, he's looking into worm castings, but he's worrying about uh, application. He wants to be able to do his own applications. And I said, hey, think about this. Because y'all seen my little short video there of me out with the little yard spreader putting them worm castings on. And I'm hearing people saying, well, you have to put the, um, that you have to put the, uh, something in there like a, a flower or something to get this stuff to flow good. And I thought, well, I think from what I'm seeing with my nurseries, okay, I got my nurseries. I'm adding the moisture to the nurseries. So if I add this fungus gnat spray to the nursery that's going to keep the castings moist so i get you on your adding your flower i think i would choose cornmeal maybe but here's my next station i also have a drying station so my nurseries then once they get hatched out then i go ahead and uh dry them down actually i mix that process up what i'm doing with those nurseries before i turn those heat mats on I go ahead and I leave the lids off and I let those castings dry down. Why am I doing it at that stage and not another stage? Because that cocoon is loaded with a gel that's going to protect those worms in there. I'm only drying them down about three days because the amount of moisture that I start with after I sift this bin is pretty low. So then... You know, I'm, I'm really, what am I doing? I'm gambling, but so I move it from here. Then I'll show you after tower four was done. I move the, um, this is sifted one eighth. No, no. Yes. This is sifted one eighth. So I have both cocoons and castings in here. This goes to the drying rack for about three days where it dries down more yet. Okay. But technically, it should not hurt anything. All of my microbes should begin to go to sleep. They should go into their cyst form so that they, um, those dour nematodes, they, they go into, when, when droughty conditions come, they protect themselves. And so they'll 
form a little cyst. I, this is what I'm hoping happens. I'm not, I'm not the main biologist on this, but here's how I'm thinking through for getting this to work for me and my other farmer friends who are trying to figure out a way to, and I'm hoping to get all of them uh, onto these worm castings instead of, they're using chicken litter light right now. And let me tell you what they're paying for that chicken litter. It is scary. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to tell them, this is the drying stage. I'm going to re-sift. I'm going to get out those smaller particles. When it's wet, sometimes I'm missing a lot of that. 112th screen. So I'm going to dry it down for three days. I'm going to run it through the 112th screen because if we're technically pulling out of them breeder bins at 14 days, so 15, 16, 17 days, and these are not on heat mats, so I'm not speeding up that cocoon process, hatching process. I got to 17 days to get this dried down, do my second sift. Then we'll put this spray onto them and get them wet again. And then uh, turn the heaters on. And then as the heaters are on, they're going to continue to dry, continue to dry down. So that's when I'll be forced to add the moisture with this uh, mosquito bites. All right. So it's going to work out perfect because I'm not going to over moisturize because I'm not going to, I'm not getting into these breeder bins and put this stuff on while they're hanging out there for, for, for 14 days. Not going to do it. I don't want to touch them again. I want to feed them, reset them, throw them away. Not throw them away. Put them back on them towers and never touch them again. So this is going to be my process for making those cocoon, uh, castings ready for the farm stand. Um, and avoiding them having any type of uh, fungal gnats. Now, to get rid of those pesky seeds, then I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to do pre-compost on everything. We've got the bioreactors going now. So everything stays thermo thermophilic. So it's hot. It'll kill the weed seeds. And then the way we run the bioreactors, they never go anaerobic. Like we turn them very, very, <laughs> very often. Okay. So let me know if I got these, you know, wet again. We can add it now. This is a nursery. It doesn't need to dry down. Um, this is the one eighth screen. And, um. I, I believe then now we can get enough of this mosquito bites on to take care of those uh, gnats and however many days this nursery goes for. I haven't looked all that up. I think it's 10 weeks they have to go. Um, and this is all taken care of. Now, as far as those castings that were sifted out, I have a great big, um, let me, I'll take you over there. Um, because... Uh, I'm just going to turn your, let me see if I can carry this darn thing over to, bought this big, huge tub here to put my, um, castings in that are ready to hit the farm stand or go out as an agriculture amendment. So these are the ones that dried down. So I'm letting them dry down a little bit more. I'm seeing how dry I can get them. I should have a fan on them, but I don't want to, I don't want to do all that right now. I mean, these are just going to go out in the agriculture field because they haven't had the mosquito spray in them. I don't know uh, if I get it wet, then I guess I'll have to dry it down with a fan. Not sure. Going to do a lot of more research on that. Uh, and now if you don't want to comment, should I spray this all down with the fungus stuff? Uh, mosquito bites is... How much of that do I need to saturate this with every time to get rid of those? But this is what I'm wanting to do is I want to get this really dry. I don't feel maybe uh, maybe I can add some of that cornmeal or something to feed the microbes. But once we dry them down, I don't I think they're not going to need to eat. They are going to be in their cyst form and they have plenty of food in there um, that when we apply them, once they hit the ground and it rains, conditions will become available for them to wake back up and woo start eating again. This is lots of work, everybody, trying to fine tune so we can make some music. Okay, I'll put you back up here and, oh, look at all the lovely plants. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's going on over here. <laughs> 
happy, happy, happy. You know what they are? The avocado trees. Look at these babies growing. I've been giving them some worm tea to water them with. Oh, I got a string of turtles in there too getting started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This guy looks like he's coming up. Trees are coming up, um, but they kind of stall. Some of them stall a little bit. Can't tell what this one. Something in there, but he's uh, stalled. I probably need, oh, I can't put the lid back on. Uh, probably need to pull out these trees, but they're rooted in there pretty good. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but just to show you an update, I haven't showed you those little trees in a while, so you get to see them. I also started out some sweet potato slips, got some worm tea for them. They've been on my kitchen counter since summer, like June. June... I'll show you this little potato. I put him in water because he was so dehydrated. This was the sweet potato that produced him back in June. And he just sat on the counter, kind of dormant. Not growing at all until now I put him in water. He should kick in. And those will be my sweet potato slips for this year. Woohoo! It's going to be a good year. I know it. Does my hair look nappy in the back? Do you guys like my red hair? Woohoo! Oh, I guess you can't even see it. That's it then. I'm going to go to sifting more worm bins. Hopefully this weekend we're going to have a new sifter for you guys. Um, built. I'm not sure. It might take a little longer than this weekend because I want to make it lightweight. So I'm thinking maybe aluminum. Let me know you hung out with me today, guys. Um... Make yourself a permanent fixture here at the Carbon Flip so you can continue to see our advances. If you're trying to make some of these advances yourself, please follow along and I'll try to keep your feet and your hands moving so that you can get some things accomplished. Uh, check back if you're not going to be here every day and see it where we're at. I um, have already applied some of these amendments to the field, so right now it's raining. So those, those castings got applied in the evening, so the sun wasn't scorching them. They were also applied after it rained about two or three days ago. Uh, so the soil was wet. I applied them in the evening, so hopefully they didn't desiccate. They were moist when I put them on there. And then yesterday it didn't rain, but it was cloudy, so that was helpful. And today we're having the rain, so that's going to get washed down into that soil. And we should see some results happening uh, the um, rye is really taking off and growing. I We'll be able to see a trail right down through the rye, I bet. It's going to be fun. I don't know. Maybe we won't see anything. Mm. So, spread the love far and wide. And I hope you come back to see me in the future.